I wasn't the kid that was able to run home to mom and dad, you know? And say like you were walking around and you would have saw something and you said something, you might have been able to save my life a long time ago. People see something, they don't say anything, they just talk shit. Oh, you little whore. Little do you know, you know? happening here in Long Island. Pretty much any town that has more than 20,000 people that live there, you can assume that human trafficking occurs there. There's a heat map that puts kind of like the number of calls that they receive in different parts of the country. And that the 95 corridor lights up. So between- Along the east coast. Between along the east coast, yep. If you're selling guns or you're selling drugs, uh, it's a one-time sale but a person can be sold again and again. So it's a, it's a high profit, kind of a low risk crime. Wow, that's crazy. This house didn't change too much. Yeah. This is where it all started. All of it. This is where I was raised. Tatiana Marie Taylor. Many of the girls are, le are led into prostitution at a young age, at um, around the teenage age, beginning years in many cases. And many of the girls that we dealt with were in, in the teens, and upper teens that we dealt with that were being trafficked. I still have a lot of the same stuff. Look at Ma, like even where Princess died, remember when she died over here? Our, our black lab. Most of the, uh, the victims that we dealt with had a history of sexual abuse as pre-adolescents. The girl is still there. Or am I, can I see? Yeah, yo, the girl's still there. My grandpa's girl's still there. They kept that because he put his, his heart into that. Wow. So this is where the molestation started. Um, from the age of three years old till seven. And it was happening right there in that little box room right there. Sexual and emotional abuse, whether it occurred in a foster home, whether it occurred by relatives or family friends, babysitters, what, what have you, uh, there's a history of, of sexual abuse and, and, and emotional abuse. I was with my grandmother. I lived with her when I was in elementary school and I was in Arizona. And I was like probably the best time of my life. Like, I think that was the only time in my life that I was actually a kid. Like, I went to school, I ate all the candy in the world I wanted. She taught me the Bible. You know, um, I was singing our choir. I played the flute. I had a rolly book bag and Heelys. I was the biggest dork in the world. Like, I was just a kid and my mom begged for me back. And my grandma's like, oh yeah, you're gonna only go there for two months for the summer. And my grandma lied to me and she sent me with my mom forever. And when I was getting registered back into school, my mom's boyfriend at the time ended up molesting me. I think it was more so financially for my mom, like she just wanted me so that she can get money from the state for me. She should have just left me alone. And then when she left me, she literally left me. Like, could you imagine waking up, right? And you're packing up everything. And you guys think you're all moving to Florida. And you wake up and everybody's gone in your house. Everybody's gone and you're the only person left in your house. She left me in Central. I, I could show you the house that she left me in. Like, it's crazy. I pass the house all the time. I was in love with this girl named Mia. And um, I told her that my mom left and shit. And I had nowhere to go. And she's like, you can stay at my house. And I went to stay with her. And 
she said it was her, her uncle. I mean, who wasn't her uncle, it was her pimp. And basically, she pretended to be in love with me. And she was my girlfriend. And that was a prostitute. And that was her pimp. And then one day were, you know, they were nice to me. They were good to me in the beginning. And then um, I saw her in the car. And my heart broke and I jumped out the car and he beat the living fucking shit out of me, threw me back in the car. And after that, it was a wrap. Went to the hotel. And I couldn't move. And they raped me. And how old were you? I was 13. I was 12 and a half when I met him and I was like 13 when that happened. And then it was hell ever since. These women are being abused. This isn't a, a, a free will that they're doing this. We're not talking about someone that's doing something on their own. We're talking about people that are forced into this lifestyle forced on uh, staying on drugs because they're hooked on drugs. There's no one helping them. And if they want more drugs, they have to perform more sex acts to perform more sex acts so they can pay their trafficker. You know, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible cycle. I see a lot of me in her. She's a role model. People took advantage of her, her beauty. She was a victim too, you know. Like in the beginning, I never accepted it. So it was a fight. I was constantly getting drugged and being and abused. Sometimes there was no sleep or days. Like you just went for days, like making money and running and keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on. And before you knew it, the whole week went by and you didn't close your eyes once, you know? The numbers of times they're sexually assaulted in a week are shocking and alarming, including as many as five or six clients a night. <laughs> I was going to high school and being sex trafficked and none of those teachers knew. Nobody paid attention. Of course I was scared. I cried every time. I cried every time. And you know what they did? They covered my mouth. And you know who was doing it? Police officers, judges, lawyers, people I still see walking around in Central I the fucking courthouse. You know how weird that shit is for me? to be walking around going to court for a fucking traffic ticket and I fucking see these fucking lawyers walking around that were fucking me when I was 13 years old. Who is actually buying sex? It's doctors, it's, it's clergy, it's politicians. A lot of prominent people in the community, including folks like judges, folks like lawyers, um, who, are, who are purchasing sex, and that's uh, what we hear consistently from our clients. Um, you know, without sort of the mechanism to confront those who are buying and selling sex, we can't really truly verify that, but we have no reason to disbelieve that. It's people with, with wealth, and it's a power dynamic, like you were saying. I mean, that's the reason why they're able to, to, to one, to do it, and then to, to get away with it. I didn't pick what my name was for the day. I didn't pick my clothes, I didn't pick anything. I didn't even know who the fuck I was or what I wanted or or anything. I got my period with this fucking guy. Like I grew up being groomed by this man. And I was only 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm 30 years old now, this just stopped. This just stopped. And this is a prostitute name that he gave me. It's a prostitute name that he gave me, the first name I ever had, Shakira. Shakira. He named me that. I don't want any of these. I'm constantly labeled. Prostitution early on was in the street, street walkers. And then it kind of, uh, and it was obvious. And the complaints came in about uh, prostitution in certain areas and community. Since the internet and social media, it's kind of come off the street almost everywhere. So, you know, very rarely you'll see in some communities, it might still exist for certain times of the day, but 
for the most part, it's come off the streets and it's gone into hotel rooms, motel rooms, and also people's houses. It's been put out of sight and out of mind to a lot of people, where people sometimes now, I think, think it's more of a, a victimless crime because they don't see it anymore. Finally. Get to breathe. You've ever been crying and light a candle and then the flame starts to flicker out of control, way higher than it's supposed to go? Or you go by the water and you're crying and for some reason the water by you is so still but everywhere else it's chaotic. If somebody's in a situation where they're being trafficked and there's violence occurring, um, it's, it's, they could be getting raped and servicing men for 15, 20 times a night for years. So it, it really messes up your brain. I mean. Your startle reflex, your, some of these things are just survival um, to be able to make it in those moments, but in, in, real, in the real world, you're just hyper-vigilant, your, your thought process gets all convoluted and you're not thinking clearly. Uh, their thoughts are kind of jumping all over the place, um, and that's the result of like a complex, like a complex trauma and, and PTSD where their thoughts are just not coming out appropriately. So. Um, and as you're talking to somebody like that, uh, you don't know what you're saying that could be triggering them, and then they get lost in their thoughts and they're kind of reliving those experiences. They're intrusive and uh, it's difficult for them to actually carry on a conversation, a logical flow. Yeah, I um, tried to commit suicide here once, about five years ago. It was black, it was dark, the water was empty. And I just jumped in and I put rocks in my pocket and they weren't heavy enough, so I floated back to the top. It's hard for people to understand how someone might be coerced into the life. And it's hard to imagine ourselves in uh, these individuals' roles, uh, in, in their shoes. Narratives around what trafficking looks like are highly problematic that we associate pretty women woman with you know what trafficking looks like is an enormous problem that is not at all what it looks like outside of perhaps very very high-end escort services um, for the people that we serve it is incredibly violent this person wouldn't see where I can see today and I ask you to forgive me for all of my transgressions my sins I ask you to cover me in your blood. I ask you to always protect me in my mind and my soul. If I did not go to jail, I would have been dead now. I would not be here with you guys, and I don't think anybody would have cared. Why do you say that? Why do you say you'd be dead right now if you hadn't been in jail? He was, he was hurting me really bad. <laughs> really bad, so bad that I never went to the hospital for anything. I probably have so much internal damage that I don't even know, like, you know. Did it get worse as you got older? Oh yeah, it got worse. My head hurts all the time. We monitor phone calls here, and at one point we noticed that there were females in one of our, our pods that was trying to recruit other females into this human traffic phenomena. I have someone that could take care of you, they'll give you a place to live, they can supply you with all the drugs that you need. And, you know, internally in jail, we had to throw out our own ring that could have been occurring inside. So imagine what's going on on the outside. Fuck you, Mia! Fuck you! Loyalty's everything, you know, especially for the female. Like, you stand your ground, you snitch on your boy, you're going, you're, he's gonna either, you're going to jail or you're gonna die. Like, you know, and I've seen my fair share of, of dark shit happened to all the people that I really cared about, and I just never wanted that to be me, you know? And unfortunately, I caught charges. You know, I was, at freaking 17, I was in trouble. At this, I was in trouble. Well, that's one of the first Union members, it's time to dream big. Union Plus is 
everyone thinks run away, run away. Running away is not an option. I was 13 years old when he finally got a hold of me. That was all I knew. And then you, you learn as you go along with this life that he really was untouchable. Like, he really was. It's, I was getting arrested. Like, you know, for stupid shit. You don't say anything, he'll come get you. Like, that's just what it was. That's still what it is. We shouldn't be criminalizing the victim. Um, we should be criminalizing those that are causing the crime. Uh, that's, that's what needs to happen. I mean, it's the only, the only crime that I can think of where we penalize the victim. It's supply and demand. So how about, you know, how about we, we punish those that are purchasing sex? How about we punish those that are setting it up, right? The buyers, why aren't, why aren't they getting steeper penalties? Where'd you learn all this? Self-taught. I taught myself by watching videos. I like art. I've always been into like drawing and stuff. So I guess it just kind of goes hand in hand. There you are. Here you go. Time to blend. <laughs> what do you want to go to school for? Honestly, I want to go to school for hair and makeup. I like making people feel good. And I want to open my own business. I want to I want to go to school for my cosmetology and then I want to go to school for business because I want to open my own salon. And I don't want it to be like a regular salon. Like I want it to be like a salon where like you go in and you do everything. Like you can come in your pajamas and you get an outfit, you get a facial, you get your hair and nails done and everything like makeup like a one stop, like a star's closet kind of situation. Like come to star's closet and walk out looking like a beautiful woman. And then I definitely want like a therapy session there. <laughs> like I have to have my therapy license because I want to be able to have heart to hearts with people and I want to be certified for it so that they know that they're talking to somebody that's at least like trauma certified, almost. Buddy, no. There needs to be a coordinated effort in how to attack this. So between law enforcement, the criminal justice system, and healthcare, there needs to be uh, a partnership where we're working together. And then we need to have just the general public be on board as well. There, there needs to be, you know, just having laws in place doesn't, doesn't help. We need to enforce the laws. There needs to be consequences. The reality is in investigating human trafficking, if we start turning over stones, we're probably not going to like what we find, both in terms of the ways in which it challenges our perceptions of our community, including the people who live in our community, the way it challenges our sense of safety within the community, that there are, you know, that we are generally safe. Um, the, the relative ease with which traffickers sell sex and move about in the community is frankly shocking to a lot of people. When society gets upset that this is going on, that's, that's where change happens. You don't make this shit up. It's like everyone wants to be blind or they see the truth, they just not brave enough to do anything about it because the people that are in power are the ones that are doing the fucked up shit. Love ya. See you later. I don't want to block your life. I'm sorry for leaving that stuff on your dresser. My bad. Sorry, buddy. See you later. I need a whole nother life. Like, I need a, a cleansing. I need, like, to be dipped in holy water and come out and just for everybody to just let it go. And let me be, <laughs> please, because I'm fucking tired. Because of the life that I have to live in order to survive because of my image, because of my past, because of my record. You know, it's forced me to have to go into fucking constant survival mode. I'm trying to be all these great things and I don't have a chance because 
No one will give me one. Because they think they know me based off paperwork. And they couldn't be more off. I've been fighting my whole life. And I've been, and I try. I'm not somebody that's not trying. Something good has to come out of this. Something good has to come out of all of this. Do you think I'm gonna be okay?